It's so easy for a preacher or a pastor to stand up here and make it up as he goes and everybody just goes along with it. That's not what we, do, what we do in Excel Church. At Excel Church, you need to see the word of God for yourself and say amen or no men. Uh, but you, but you got you, you, you to gotta see it for yourself and, and, and you got to know God for yourself. So we're, 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 we're spiritual traffic cops pointing you to God and both of us are held accountable as we look at the word of God and peruse through it and navigate through it and see what God has to say uh, 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 about situations, circumstances in our lives. Never reduce the word of God down to popular spiritual sayings. Never reduce the word of God down to religious sayings. Never reduce the word of God down to your opinion when you're ministering to people. Because why? They have to become skillful believers themselves that learn how to take the word of God off the pages and see it manifested into their everyday lives. And there's a lot of people who've been in church 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years, couldn't even stand up and preach the, 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 the crucifixion. Couldn't stand up and preach the resurrection. Why? Because a lot of times we talked about it in our life track, we're raised up in religion. And we're raised up to, 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 to drag our words when we read the Bible and, and, and put s behind words when we read the Bible. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the bottom line is, do you understand what you're reading? Do you understand what you're putting on your family? Do you understand what you're bringing your family in up under? Do you understand it for yourself? And we just believe you got to see the word of God for yourself and you make the judgment. Do I want to follow this Lord or do I not? So make sure that you always have a Bible, a pen, a notebook or, or, or an iPad or a phone so you can see the word of God for yourself. When I'm just visiting churches, th th that's fine. If you visit some more churches, make sure you see the word of God for yourself so you too can, can, can make a sound judgment on whether or not you, 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 you're flowing with what's coming across the pulpit. Amen? Amen. Oh, boy, you're going to run people off saying, I don't own nobody. What are you talking about running some people off? You're God's sheep. <laughs> you have to be called here. You understand what I'm saying? So we're going to dig into this word. We're on our life track. And for those of you who are visiting with us for the first time, we thank God for you taking time out of your busy schedules to hang out with us. But this life track is helping us define where we come, where we come from. It's helping us define the origin of what we come out of. What kind of household were you raised up in? What kind of church environment were you introduced to when you was a child? What, what kind of environment did you come up in? And, 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 and what kind of family did you come out of? Uh, 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 were you valued as a little child? Were you abandoned by your parents? Were you abandoned by your mother or your father when you was coming up? Why? All of those things out of our father's house, our father's house, our father's house many times can have more sway over our life decisions than the word of God does. I don't believe that. Well, Amos 3 and 3 says you should do all things in agreement, but I can tell you what, there's a lot of Christians who's got their money separated. Because their daddy told them, you, you, you make sure you do this. And their mama told them, listen, let me tell you something. Keep a little something on the side. He ain't got to know you got it. God forbid he start acting crazy. You got some money set to the side to get out of there. Well, what, what is that? Well, it's definitely not Bible. It's Father's house. It's Father's house. And our Father's house have a lot of sway over us. That's why we're dealing with this life track so we can understand, okay, let's stop, let's stop acting like who we're not here. Let's really confront what we came out of. Let's really confront the religion that might have robbed us as teenagers uh, from even going to Disney World. Uh-huh. So a pastor stands up and he says, Disney World is of the devil. And, and, and the person without the Bible, pen, the Bible that penned the notebook, they believe it. And they say, kids, we're not going to Disney World. It's of the devil. Well, who, where'd you get that from? Turn that Harry Potter off. Put those Pokemon cards down. It's, just, it's just up the devil. And your kid's got a 4.0 sound mind, sound body, sound soul. And somehow or another, we think that Pokemon cards are going to keep him out of heaven. That's religion. Nobody wants any part of that. That's silly. And at XL Church, if you're going to excel in God, you got to know, okay, you need to see it in the word of God for yourself. But don't come up with fables, like the Bible says, and wise sayings, and try to impose that on the people closest to you. Amen. So it's been, it's, been, it's been real interesting going through this life track, looking at the environments we come, up, come out of, dealing with the betrayal uh, that may have happened to us uh, via divorce or whatever it may be, dealing with the betrayal of a spouse, you know, people getting divorced, and, 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 and the mother decides, well, guess what? You're not going to see your kids when you're supposed to see them. And, and, and here you are sitting in church acting like that. You cannot carry yourself like that. If he gets them every two weeks, he's got to get them every two weeks. You, 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 have, you, you, you can't get a divorce and remove the father from the kid's life and say, I'm, I'm following Jesus Christ. 
No, even to your own hurt, you got to walk in love, even though you guys have went separate ways. But if you're not, you haven't dealt with that betrayal, every man is a dog now. Marriage is not for me now. Well, all husbands ain't bad. All wives ain't bad. Anybody who stands up with a big broom and just sweep and say, oh, wait a minute now. <laughs> it's men in this church, they love their wives. It's men in this church, their wives know exactly where they are 24-7. They want them to know that. They're not trying to hide nothing. They don't have a little side chick in their phone at CVS Pharmacy. They don't, they don't have it like that. They're not even trying to do that. Listen, we, 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 we love our wives in this church here. We honor our wives in this church here. We serve our wives in this church. We're not trying to, we're not trying to escape with the boys to get away from our marriage. Man, I, man, I love my wife. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, 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 so you got to deal with betrayal because you, you might have got divorced. God hates divorce, but he still loves divorced people. There's still somebody out there for you that wants to love you for who you are. So that can be a part of your, your life track. And, 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 and a big one, how did you come up in church? I know how I came up in church. I knew 9 o'clock church, 12 o'clock church, 2 o'clock church, go home four hours, come back, 6 o'clock church. And man, I couldn't wait till I turned 18, so I am done with this church relay every single Sunday. And even as a child, I still notice everybody is still mean. Everybody's still sitting around talking about everybody in the church. And that's how I came up in church. So once I got introduced to non-denominational church, and, and a guy stood up with the Bible, opened it up and started teaching it, and I could actually, actually drop my kids off with some reputable people versus the kids. When I, when I, mean, <laughs> when I grew up, we were just put in a room, and that, and that was it, buddy. Or you was in the sanctuary, which for me, my laced potato chips and my crackers. But man, if I made one wrong move in that church, I was, I was physically assaulted. <laughs> As a seven-year-old with a thump on my head, or a pinch on my bicep or tricep, and I said, "Man, this, 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 this has got to—it's it's, got to be better than this." So a lot of people's church situation is a lot worse than mine. They were told in church, "You can't—you can't wear pants as a lady. You can't do it." They were told in church, "Take that Mary Kay off your face. That's of the devil." My God, are you serious? Are you serious? And I know what scripture you're coming from. I know where you're trying to come from. But Jesus died and rose from the dead. The, the first, you, you, you're, you're under the law when you talk like that. You're under first Adam. But the Bible says there's a second Adam that came along, and he set us free. Yeah. And I, now I, my wife got this makeup, that makeup, this, this perfume, that perfume. Listen, you want your wife to look good. But there are some people who came up, just not going to happen. And to this day, they still believe that that you're more holy in a dress than you are in pants. And I'm here to tell you, that's just not true. But religion will tell you that. And that's what we dealt with in our life track. And, and, and we dealt with family. But today, it's getting ready to get thick and heavy. And I've been heavy all week looking at this, all month looking at this, research the stories, the horror stories. It just, it just weighs you down. It, 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 just, it just gets to you. The title for today is Molestation is Wrong. Molestation is wrong. I wanted to keep it simple. I don't care about title. I don't care about position. I, molestation is wrong. And there are some people in this room and at the sound of my voice on their life track, they were touched by an adult when they were a child. And it still messes with them to this day. And they try to find traction in life. They try to carry out a relationship. They try to love their husbands. They try to love their wives. And, 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 they, and they try. But, but, but until, until this thing is dealt with at the root via Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who can set them free and heal them, they have to navigate this. And it's horrific. It's evil. That's why it's important with my son. I don't, ever since they, they, they play, they play, they play, they play, they play. And he knows when he hear, he's tickling his sister. And when he hears her say, no, stop, he knows. Stop. Right there. Why did I raise my son like that? I wanted him to know stop means stop. Whether it's verbal or tickling, it means, okay, stop. Molestation is wrong. 
I've been in ministry 20 years, and I've seen some horror stories. I've been up close. I've known some people. I've, I've, so, so, so I've seen it. I've seen ministry leaders do this. I've seen dads molest their daughters. Stepbrothers molest their stepsisters, their sisters. I've seen babysitters molest little boys. And let me say this to the men. It's not a badge of manhood for you to sit silent and act like it doesn't affect you if you was molested by a woman. Because the world wants you to think and the devil wants you to think it had no effect on you. And you raise up in your manhood and you think, oh, man, I'm good to go. Well, well, all she did was, you know, this, 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 and this. I mean, I, I get that done now. Let me tell you something. As a child, you were scarred if you were touched wrong. I heard a guy say one time, if you plant an oak tree in the ground, when it's a baby oak tree, take a screwdriver and scar that oak tree and come back 20 years later. And that oak tree is large, it's huge. It's, it's, uh, the, 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 the toppings are, are branching out 30 feet per branch. He said, Go to that oak tree and you'll still see that scar. Why? Because the scar grew with the tree. And molestation, I'm here to tell you, until you deal with it. And don't compartmentalize it. Don't try to convince yourself. If you start saying things like this, I, don't, I think I, you're just trying to deny it. I wonder. I, you're just trying to deny it. And molestation really affects our affection. It, it affects us because you don't trust nobody. You're not supposed to deal with that when you're six years old. You're not supposed to deal with that when you're eight years old. Eight years old. You're not supposed to deal with, well, why is Grandpa doing this to me? Why is Uncle Joe doing this to me? Why is she doing this to me? You're not supposed to deal with that. And your mind can handle it. So what does the mind do? The mind is a powerful thing. It just parks it over here and says, suppress it. Go out here and be successful, and it'll go away. Well, we know multi-billionaires to this day. That when they went out and they became billionaires, and they'll tell you to this day, that thing is still parked right here in my soul. Somebody say molestation is wrong. Molestation is wrong. Now, it's, 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 it's important that you hear me say, I'm not a doctor. I'm ministering from the word of God. I'm ministering from a hurt soul. I'm ministering from the power of Jesus Christ to heal all. And don't convince yourself that you're so far gone and somebody's so far gone that this, this particular thing right here, God's word can't touch. No such thing. No such thing. You carry yourself like that with the word of God. And this is a little bit steep right here. I don't know if the word can touch it. Well, what, what, what you're doing is you're trying to become somebody's God and you become your own God because somebody else come right along with the same situation and they're healed from it. And it debunks your theory that it's so tough and deep that they can't, it can't be touched by the word of God. No such thing. No such thing. May take one longer. May take, may get it, may take longer to get healed or whatever it is. May, may be a little bit more uh, damaging to that person. But the bottom line is the word of God is more powerful than a two-edged sword. And it can heal us at the root. Amen? So let's look at molestation. <clears throat> let's look at the definition of this. And this is hard. This, this is rough. Uh, and the devil wants you to do everything to tune this out and continue to get your degrees and continue to uh, 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 hide behind your beards, hide behind your muscles, hide behind the degrees. He wants you to do that and just let that thing park right there in your soul. Instead of hearing yourself saying out loud, guess what? I was molested and it was wrong. I was molested and it was wrong. And it affects me to this day, and I'm going to spend time with God from here until I leave this earth to deal with this in my soul. Amen? Let's look at molestation uh, up on the screens here. <clears throat> God, have mercy. Oh. Patience, patience, Derek. Patience, patience, patience. Lord, help me. Okay, we're going to keep going here. Um, I ain't rushing. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. Molestation is a crime of engaging in sexual acts with minors. Everybody repeat that with me. Molestation, Molestation. 
is the crime of engaging in sexual acts with minors. <clears throat> this also includes touching of private parts. It doesn't have to be penetration. It can be funneling. Exposure, showing themselves, showing the genitalia. Taking, uh, taking pornographic, uh, pornographic pictures, showing them to minors. Rape, inducement of sexual acts. <clears throat> Rape, inducement of sexual acts, and also with the molester, they justify this in their minds. And we're going to look at the word of God and see and see how this happened, uh, you know, th th throughout the Bible. Molestation is wrong and molestation on a minor. Jesus, we're going to see in the word of God what Jesus said about that. But you, but you got to understand the depth of evil it takes to see a five year old boy or girl. As a sexual outlet. You have to know the sickness of soul that has taken place. In that individual. And nine times out of ten, they were molested when they were little. You know, I heard a guy uh, uh, say, he said, they say, once a bear tastes blood, all of a sudden now, he's hunting humans. And they have to put him down. Because once he tastes that blood, he begins to hunt the humans and not the animals. And once a molester justifies in his mind that it's okay to impose himself against another person's will, they taste the blood. Now, I'm here to tell you, this is not a light subject. <laughs> because some people are very professional at suppressing what I'm talking about and telling themselves it never happened to me. That's how painful it is. Sometimes their spouse don't even know it happened to them. Why? They don't want to open that dark door and walk back in that dark room. But I'm here to tell you today, Jesus Christ said, open the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Be brave enough to open that door, to go through it. Why? Molestation is absolutely wrong. And there are some people that came up in it, and it happened to them, and to this very day, it affects how they process life. <clears throat> I'm going to give you another word, grooming. Grooming <clears throat> is the process by which a child molester gains control of the child for purposes of molesting him or her. And oftentimes part of that process is also grooming the family. That's why you don't trust every coach to take your kid back and forth to that's why you don't trust every neighbor to transport your kids just because you're going to be inconvenienced of driving across town to get them. That's why you, you, I'm not saying live in fear, but at, but at some point, you got to understand evil lurks. That's why you sit your kids down and you let them know, listen, the only, you, you, sit, you, you sit your kids down and you let them know, from one to probably eight or seven years old, the only people that see your private parts are me and your mother and your doctor. No other relative, no other babysitter, no other teacher, no other coach, no ministry leader, no pastor, no elder, nobody else sees these. Now, there comes a time when daddy is hands off with it now. <laughs> and I knew when your daughter covers up at eight years old, she's telling you right there, that time has come. You turn it over to mom, and mom handled those things. But I knew, hey, there's, there's, there's nobody that should see these parts other than me and your mother. That was drilled. And I encourage you to do the same thing. I encourage you to talk to your kids and make sure they understand that. I encourage you to sit down with them and give them life lessons on the proximity of people's hands and where they're supposed to go towards their body. You give it to them. Why? Because the grooming process, the groomer, that's spending time with your kids playing soccer and softball, the groomer that's motivating them and telling them how good they are. Not all. We don't use all. I'm just saying you got to have some checkpoints in place because groomers just don't groom the kids. They groom the family too. And for a lot of people, this was part of their life track. So grooming is the process by which a child molester gains control of the child uh, uh, for the purpose of molesting 
him or her. And oftentimes part of that process is also grooming the family. Grooming is a, listen to me, a non-violent process. Sometimes the groomers are very nice. Gaining trust. But they're like the bear who's tasted blood. And molestation is wrong. It's absolutely wrong. That's why I have a saying. If. If I'm at the restaurant. And your kid goes to the bathroom. Trust me. And you're not there. Your kid is safe. I'm a man of God. I am a man of God and I am here with other men to protect our children. Not impose ourselves on them, but protect them. And if I see any funny business, any this or that, trust me, it's put the pastor hat down and now it's, it's on and popping, buddy. <laughs> Why? Why? Why is it so important? We got to surround our children with protection. And sometimes the mom is not there and the dad is not there. But as believers, and I know there's molesters within the body of Christ, within the other communities, other, Christian, other religions, I know that. But, 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 but XL Church, men, we have to be protectors. If you're at the XL and you see somebody just standing around looking, what do you want, brother? Are, are you hunting eggs? You, 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 you got kids here? Are you a member of the church? Why are you standing on the edge of the woods? Well, I'm just standing here watching the kids. Well, you're not going to stay here and watch the kids. Matter of fact, let me go over here and get JSO and let them go over here and talk to you. And if you look around and he's gone, good. You did your job. Because we don't play about that. We don't play about that. Molestation, another definition. Molestation it is a sexual assault or abuse of a person. You can be 21 and get, and, 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 and get sexually assaulted against your will. No means no. Stop means stop. I don't want to means I don't want to. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. As a church, stop protecting molesters. Yeah. Man, 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 the church is going to fall. Man, man, the town, the, 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 the news. Hey, 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 brother. Hey, 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 listen to me. If you think that children are going to be hurt under this umbrella and you mix in religion and this seven-year-old daughter is going to grow up knowing she was violated in the church and the church protected the pastor or the leader or whatever it is, do you know what that's going to do to her mind? No way, Jose. Let's pull the covers off and let's just see what God's got to say about it. But let me tell you this. I'm not thinking about no church resources. I'm not thinking about your anointing. I'm not thinking about you getting, being called by God to change the nations. I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about this seven-year-old boy or this seven-year-old girl that was violated. Now, somebody's got to tell me something because I'm going straight to, not the throne, J. Yeah. S O. Why? Because we protect our children. Why you gotta say that? You'd be surprised. How many victims have sat in church, sat in an office, and, and, and right there with their parents, right there with the mother, right there with the father, and, and the church leader grooms them into thinking God's got to handle them and just repent and we move on. And man, they do it. It's like, no way, Jose. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at God. I'm looking at my six-year-old woman, my eight-year-old daughter, and I'm here to tell you, they're not going to grow up knowing I sat here in this office and agreed with this under the guise of God's going to take care of it. No way, Jose. Their story, their narrative is going to be, my mother and father stood up for me. God have mercy. Let me calm down. I got veins in my throat and everything else. <laughs> but 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 this is this, this this is a serious thing. And uh, I want to read this to you uh, before we look at this thing. <clears throat> Listen, I'm very 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 sorry for what you experienced if you was molested or sexually abused. And I wish that I could wave a magic wand and take it all away. But since I can't. I can only outstretch my arms to tell you that you are loved, you are worthy, and you did absolutely nothing wrong. You may not believe me. <clears throat> you may have been telling yourself stories for decades, stories about how you asked for it, stories about how you dressed inappropriately, how you led, some, led someone on, how you drank too much, how you should have been more cautious, how you should have been more 
uh, 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 preventive, and, and it wouldn't have happened. But these are only stories. Nobody ever deserves to be sexually abused. I don't care how you was dressed. But I had too many to drink. Nobody deserves to be sexually abused. No matter what. Listen to me. You did nothing wrong. And you, my friend, are innocent. You're innocent. They perpetrated the wrong. You're innocent. I'm blessed to have never been, I'm blessed to have never been molested or raped. But sadly, there are too few people like me out there. And statistics show about one-third of men and women in the U.S. have been sexually assaulted or abused in some way. In places like Africa, that number is much, much higher. Do you guys understand what that means? That means that when you go to the grocery store and look at women or men standing in line, one in three of those men or women have been violated sexually. Which means, to those who this has happened to, you're not alone out there. Everywhere you look, someone else has suffered the way you have. And you don't need to carry that by yourself any longer. You also don't need to keep secrets. You may be afraid to tell anyone about what happened. You may fear that the others will judge you. You may fear that it may taint your image. You may worry that family members won't believe you if you tell them that you, you're seemingly jolly, in my notes, grandpappy, or uncle, or stepbrother, or stepsister, or aunt, was sneaking into your bedroom after you fell asleep. You may question your own memory and wonder if you're making these things up. You may want to avoid hurting others. That's what they tell you. You're going to tear this family up. It's already tore up. The mere fact that it was done to me, it's already tore up. What family are you talking about? What family image are you talking about? What, family, what dynamic family are you talking about? Because it happened within the family. What, if, what family am I going to tear up? It's already tore up, and the secrets, we're done with the secrets. So I'm, I'm, I'm stepping forward. I'm telling my family. I'm telling them everything that's happening under this roof. I'm stepping forward, and I'm going to tell it, period, point blank, end of sentence. Well, we're going to disown you. Well, I tell you what. I, I, well, 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 I just take that chance because I'm trying to figure out what family tradition are we protecting here. No, what we're protecting is child abusers. We're, what we're protecting is adults who touch children, and it's wrong, and that's over with. You may think you asked for it when you got all dressed up in your sexiest, sexiest outfit that looked like a costume that Madonna would wear. <laughs> you may think you deserved it because you might have been stoned in college. You might have been stoned at the party with some guy you barely knew that you were dancing with, but he had other motives in mind. You may feel angry at yourself for not saying no more forcefully to the molester. You may have consented or even enjoyed the attention because you were too young to know what no means. And no means no. Stop means stop. That's why husbands, uh, dads, arm your daughter with some mace and some pocket knives. Get the taser. Get the pepper spray. Get, get it and, and teach them how to use it. My daughter has it. Is that against relatives too? <laughs> Trying to forcefully do something to you? Absolutely. <clears throat> you simply didn't deserve it. I don't care how religion tries to tell you you deserve it. I don't care how your family tells you, try to tell you to be quiet, keep it on the rug. You simply didn't deserve it. Guess what? They're going on with their lives. And here you are struggling in every relationship, struggling with pornography, struggling with trusting people, struggling to, to hold any job down. And it's like everybody else is going on with their lives, and you're the keeper of a dark, evil secret that happened to you and your family. 
and they want you to save the family. You may feel guilty or dirty or even slutty. You may feel like damaged goods. You may, be, you may have confronted your abuser or pressed charges and told your therapist, your doctor, or your husband, or you may have buried your secrets so deep in the crevices of your soul that you ba- you're barely even aware of it in your conscious brain. But listen to me. Your body knows. Your body knows. Well, I'm single, and I'm, I, I kind of dealt with it. When you get married, I've, I've, I've heard stories. A certain act or move happens in the bed, and anger and lamps and everything and glasses and dishes are thrown. And the husband or the wife is shocked. What just happened? The flashback came. Your body knows that was wrong. And it doesn't forget. But Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the healer of all healers, Jehovah Rapha, can heal you. And he died for you to be healed. Amen. Amen. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 13. Glory to God. Now, you got to know it's wrong. You got to teach your kids that it's wrong. Single ladies, it's wrong. When you say back up, they need to back up. When you say remove your hand, they need to remove their hand. Single guys, when you say, hey, 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 stop. Listen, (laughs) there's female wolves and male wolves too. So, guys, when you say, hey, no, 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 not here. Not now. Well, you know you want, well, wait a minute, you, no, 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 <laughs> no, if you go this quick with me, how quick have you went with, hold on, hold on now, I, 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 wait a second, I'm just on a date here, I'm, 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 matter of fact, let me give you, let me give you a secret, guys, uh, single guys, walk to the door sill and stop, set some rules in your life, why is that, you get in there and you don't cooperate and she hollers, so you don't have no rules set in your life, you got to know what you're dealing with out here. Second, second Samuel uh, 13. Whew. And it came to pass after this, Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister. The, the King James called it fair. We call it fine. We call it a, a ten. whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. Watch this now. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. And if you know anything about Jonadab, he was a very clever manipulator with his wisdom. The son of Shemina, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very, there it is, subtle man. And he said unto him, why are you being the king's son? Now, Now, here's the justification. Why are you being the king's son lean from day to day? Will you not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, lay thee down on thy bed and make yourself sick. Here's the grooming. Here here, here it is. Here's this clever man telling, (laughs) telling him, He deserves it because your daddy's the king, brother. Make yourself sick, man, and when thy father comes to see you, say unto him, I pray thee, watch this, let my sister come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it out of her hand. 
So Amnon <clears throat> lay down and made himself sick. Look at the manipulation. His lust is taking control. And when the king was come to see him, see, he's on his stepsister right now. He's after her. And when the king had come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make, make me a couple of cakes in my sight that I may eat at her hand. Then David uh, sent home to Tamar saying, go now to thy brother. Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and he was laid down and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight. So here's an innocent girl. Beautiful girl, virgin. Just doing what her dad says and, and just serving her brother. Verse 9. And she took a pan and poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. He didn't want no cake. And Amnon said, have out all men from me. In other words, clear the room, everybody. Go ahead and get out. Let me tell you something, men. If there's one woman in that room and somebody say, clear the room, you say, hey, Bill, stay back. I know this is a business meeting, but stay back with me. That's why we don't let the children go to the bathroom with one, with one uh, teacher. It's two. The second one is not watching the child. I'm watching the first one. Not that the first one's going to do something bad, but we got layers of accountability. Because if you go in that bathroom by yourself as a youth worker, young lady, young man, and all of a sudden that child says, you better have some accountability around and say, wait, 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 something's going on here. Trust me when I tell you this. I'm just going to go out to lunch with her. We're going to sit down at the bar. You go out to, it's just business lunch. Okay, you better have somebody else with you now. Why? To have your version of the story at hand as well. Because at any time, evil can show up and say you did something that you didn't do. So just put some accountability checks in place. So the guy didn't want to eat no cake, verse 10. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat it of thy hand. Nasty joker. And Tamar took the cakes that which she had made and brought, him, uh, brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them in to eat, he took hold of her hand and said unto her, come lay down with me, my sister. Evil, dirty, nasty, unchecked lust, a vexed, vile spirit operating under, under the guise of, I deserve this. This is who I am. I got power. God have mercy. And she answered him, no. Right there. No, my brother. Do not force me. Which tells us he's forcing himself now. Do not force me. For no such thing ought to be done here in Israel. Do not this folly, my brother. And I whither shall I cause my shame to go. This is going to be shameful. This is going to destroy me. As for thee, you shall be as one of the fools in Israel. She's trying to remind him, you're the king's son. What are you about to do to your royal family? Poor baby. She was more concerned with the royal family image than realizing you're wrong. Where's my mace? Where's my knife? Where's my Swiss blade? Because what you're doing is violent. I'm going to get violent. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold uh, uh, me from thee. Howbeit he will not hearken unto her, her voice, but, 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 but being, stronger than she, she, being stronger than she, forced her and lay down with her, if you know what I mean. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly. So he's humiliating this girl. He steps us to hated her exceedingly so that, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had had loved her. He didn't want her. He wanted her sex. He wanted her body. He wanted to fulfill his lust. That is evil. And the Bible says he hated her after the act was done. 
And I'm going to say to her, arise and go. Somebody said molestation is wrong. This is a powerful family right here. Arise and go. Go ahead and get out of here. <clears throat> Verse 16, and she said unto him, there is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater. Is greater than the other that you do unto me. Not only did you rape me, now you're throwing me out like trash. You won't even apologize. You won't, you, you, an apology won't get it, but gosh, she's witnessing such dark evil. It's blowing her mind in her own family. But he would not even hearken unto her. In other words, hear and do anything. I don't hear you. I'm not apologizing. Get out. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, put now, get this woman out of here. Get away from me. Matter of fact, and lock the door as soon as she get out of here. So there's guys standing around for the cover up. And the cover up is just as evil as the act. I don't want to ruin our family. Like I say, it's already ruined. Until Jesus comes in and sheds some light on it. But this powerful family has got everybody trained. We do what we want to do to who we want to do it to. And in this case, it's our own family, and she's a virgin. <clears throat> and she's David's daughter. So get this woman out of here, man. I, I mean, get her gone. Get out of here. I don't want to see her. And she had a garment, for, verse 18, and she had a garment of, 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 of divers colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins. It was, she, she had on virgin apparel when this happened to her. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her, verse 19, and Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment. In other words, tore them off of the divers' colors that was on her. This lady, she, she is humiliated. And laid her hand on her head and went on crying. She's devastated. And there's grown men standing outside that door instead of rushing in and saying, you know what? I know what happened to me if I killed the king's son, but so be it. I got a daughter in this compound. Who's to say my daughter's not next if this is not called out or put in check? Sometimes you got to do like the young folks say, stand on some business. <laughs> hey, Unc, uh, uh, my niece Sherry said that you, that you, uh, you, you came towards her inappropriately. You said something inappropriate to her? I just told her, man, she's just feeling out just like her mama. Okay, wait, wait, wait what, do you, what do you mean feeling out just like her mama? She's 13. You said that to her? Hey, uh, I talked to Danny. I talked to Paul. Don't you ever in your life use those kind of words towards my niece again. So what you going to do? What do you mean? What, 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 I, 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 I'm not one just to talk about this. I'm, I'm trying to tell you now. Don't, 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 don't try me on that. And you, let her, you, you let her tell me one more time that you say those kind of words to her. Matter of fact, what kind of uncle is telling his niece and his cousin, you're filling out? The, what are you even looking like that for? You're grooming. Verse 20, and Absalom, and Absalom uh, her brother said unto her, uh, have Ammon thy brother been, they, been thee? But hold now thy peace, my sister. Hold, be quiet now. Hold thy peace, my sister. He is your brother. Regard not this thing. Forget this thing now. This is your brother. How sick is this family? How sick is all of this? How sick is this environment to cover up such a heinous crime that was committed on this young lady? <clears throat> Gosh. Hold your peace now. This is your brother. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very mad. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister Tamar. And the brother ticked off. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep bears and Balazar, which is beside Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons, and Absalom came uh, came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant has sheep, she, sheep shears. Uh, let the king, I beg thee, and his servants, go with thy servant. And the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all go, lest, lest we be chargeable unto thee. And he pressed him, howbeit he would not go, but 
blessed him. Then said Absalom, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him that, 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 that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants saying, uh, mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine. Let me know when he get toe up. Now, we know Jesus died and rose, rose, rose from the dead, and, and, and we understand that this is Old Testament, but, but you, you get ready to see that there was just some men that just couldn't take it no longer. Two years, and you still think you're giving orders, and you, you, you're still doing it. We've seen 10 girls going now, nah, bro, that, this is getting ready to come to a screeching halt. This is it, boy, because my left station is wrong. He said, look, man, let me know when he's married with wine. Now, Absalom had commanded his servants saying, mark, mark him now. Let me know when he's married with wine, and when I say unto you, smite Amnon, and kill him. Fear not. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did not to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's son arose and every man got up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass while they were in the way, the tidings came to David saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons. And there is not one left You know what I feel Absalom made his mind up for? When he said, I'm going to stand up for, for, for evil. I'm going to push back against this darkness. Absalom had already died when he gave the orders. I know it's going to happen to me, but it will not happen to another girl under my watch. I know it's going to happen to me. It will not happen to another child under my watch. I know what the family's going to do with me. I know what they're going to say about me, but it's not going to happen to another family member while I'm on this planet. And guess what? They made this on you. But when you confront this kind of evil, you, you got to already know, okay, I may lose my job. That's okay. All right. That's okay. What about their side of the family? Hey, they can ready to find out who he is, I guess. <laughs> but they're going to disown you. My, hey, hey. But you're married to, 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 to his daughter. Hey, 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 me and his daughter's cool. What does she think? Oh, she wanted to stop too. They told her to be quiet. Don't say nothing about it. But she, she married the right guy. <laughs> Because it stops today. So he had already died. And most guys who, who you, you, the Martin Luther Kings and, 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 and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and Mandela, Mandela, all these guys, you're like, how can they stand up against these guys have already said, if I die standing up for it, I die. I know there's a possibility when I go out every single day, somebody wants to kill me. That's okay. I've already died for this cause. <sighs> Let's look at some thoughts behind this. God, have mercy. Thank you, Lord. So let's look at thought number one. coming out of this story. It's never the violated victim's fault. You come across somebody who's went, been through this horrific crime, you let them know it's not your fault. Yeah, but they say I was dressed, it's not your fault. Yeah, but they said I should have been drinking, not your fault. Yeah, but he said he loved, not your fault. It's never the violated victim's fault. It was not her fault that she was fair, fine, and a virgin and, and, and the king's daughter. And, and it was not her fault. <clears throat> and if you know any victims, if you are a victim yourself, I came here to tell you, it wasn't your fault. And Jesus Christ loves you. And he died and rose from the dead to, to begin to comfort you. And it may not happen overnight. But at least you're on a journey to be healed at the roots. But the first step to knowing that is, it wasn't my fault. 
I was six years old. I was seven years old. I was 13. She was, she was 12. She was 15. She, she didn't have a daddy around. She, she, see, that's, that, that's the thing, man. We, we, when, when men are around, you got to have, have four eyes to see that ain't right right there. Why is that daughter so clammed up around her daddy like that? Hmm. Why does she hold her head down all the time? What's going on here? It's never her fault. It's never the victim's fault. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Next thought. Sexual abusers are con- conniving and cunning. They walk in a wicked innocence to fulfill their evil lust. Amnon walked in a wicked innocence. And he had a buddy who was very clever, but he used his wisdom to manipulate. And his buddy basically convinced him, because of who you are, you have access to this. You're cunning. You're, conv- you're, 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 you're cunning. You're conniving. They walk in this wicked innocence to fulfill their evil lust. Next thought. Sexual abusers many times seek to hide itself or themselves in plain view. They can hide themselves in plain view. Because we're so trained with the eye to look at car, house, grooming, uh, how they groom themselves, how they speak, talk, so on and so forth. We're, we go by what we see, and they understand that. So they, they, they paint a portrait that I'm an ideal citizen. I want the best for your daughter. I want the best for your son. And I'm not saying we got to walk around with critical eyes. I am saying we got to walk around, when it comes to our kids, with the checkout spirit. Matter of fact, uh, no, uh, no, I'll come get you. Yeah, but she was going to bring, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I I love her, don't know her. I don't don't know her. Great coach, great teacher, whatever. I just... I don't know it in the capacity to trust my seed with her. I'm not looking down on it. I'm quite sure somebody look, 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 look at us as parents. We're great parents, but I'm quite sure they're not going to just allow us just to just take their kid home. So I'm not, just, we're not saying that she's a bad person. We're just saying, son, daughter, we have rules in place to protect us, and I hope you carry this on with your kids. Mommy or daddy will be there. There's not enough fatigue in a mother or a father who works every day to just put your kids off on somebody else, to just, just, just do what you should be doing as their parent. You know how hard I work? You had them. <laughs> now they're soccering, baseballing. They're doing it all now. It's time to get to work now. The party's over. Next thought. The sick abuser thinks they have a privilege to command. Amnon thought he had a privilege to command. Amnon thought commanding her against her will was his privilege because of who he was. Amnon looked at her and said within himself, because of who I am, I'm going to command her to give to me of herself. And he knew she's going to do it. Why? King's son. Royal family. You do what we say or you die. You do what we say or you don't get, you, you don't, you don't get fed. You do what we say or you lose all your protection. And he abused that. And sick abusers think they have the privilege to command. Amnon thought commanding her was against a uh, 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 command. Amnon thought commanding her against her will was his privilege, and we all know that was a lie. Next thought. Listen to me. No amount of lust or desires gives anyone a pass to sexually violate you. Oh, it just overtook me. I just, I just, oh my God, your eyes. I, I just, no amount of sexual desire or lust gives anyone a pass to rip your clothes off of you, to sexually violate you. To force you. Young ladies, you pay attention to when you say no and stop early on how they respond. 
That's no, don't text me. No, don't call me at this time. Boy, if they persist, what, you need to, you, red flag need to go up. Right. Do you understand when I say no, don't call me this time of night? Do you understand what that means? Well, do you understand that I got your phone number and you pick that phone up when I call you? Oh. <laughs> All right. Ghost. You're ghosted. Well, you don't know me. I remember Marviante was uh, about 14, 15. We had this big, long expedition uh, club wagon, and, and we was riding out uh, Phillips Highway. We had just left church, and, and, and we, 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 we passed uh, old Regal Cinema there. And, and I'm just try, driving, just kind of cruising. Church is good, sunroof open. You know, it's, you know, it's Sunday nap, here I come. And, and, and I hear him on the phone, yeah, 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 just past Sunbeam. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I was in church. We got out uh, about 11.45. We got out of church. Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, where am I at now? Dad, where, where we at, Dad? Uh, we're passing uh, Riga Cinema. Man, I came to that stoplight. I say, ah, who you talking to? Who the heck wants to know your every move like that? Who's trying to know that? You're 14. Well, she just wanted to know. I said, no. Nobody needs to know your every move like that. And I tell you, you tell your son and daughter, nobody needs to know you ever move like that. Yeah, we're going to go out of town and we're going to be out of town for five days. Who, who are you telling that? You're 14, you're 15, you're 16. Who are you telling that? Don't do that. But if you haven't had this conversation, all of your intimate details about your home, it's been shared with their friends. It's been shared with a controlling little boyfriend, a controlling little girlfriend. It's like, no, when we go out of town, only a few people know. Shut your mouth. I told him, I said, man, you are too young for all this serious stuff right now. So you need to check her on that. She don't need to know you every move like that. Okay, okay, okay. (laughs) Okay, all right. Man, gosh. Like you already know. (laughs) Next, Next thought. This is big to me. Positional power never gives permission to gratify itself. I'm talking granddaddy position. I'm talking daddy position. I'm talking mother position. I'm talking pastor position. I'm talking supervisor position. I'm talking principal position. I'm talking school teacher. Your position, nor power, ever gives you permission to gratify yourself or itself. See, when you understand this and you start to see it happen, and your kids understand this and they start to see it happen, guess what? You've taught them how to recognize it. I don't care what your school teachers say. I, listen, if it's that time of the month, mama will come up there and take care of you. I don't need no, uh, how, you're twi- I don't need no other school teacher going to the bathroom with you, bringing your pants down and trying to show you how to do that. Sweetheart, we, we forgot the stuff you needed today. Go to the bathroom, get some tissue, and, 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 and take care of yourself, and, and, and mommy will be there in one hour. Yeah, but mommy is an hour across town. Man, PTO, here I come. Here I come. I'm not that busy. I'm not that busy. I am coming. I don't want nobody touching you and showing you how to do that. I'm on my way. And PTO, here I come. No positional power gives permission to gratify itself with our children or with any young lady, any young man. Next thought. Evil heartedness fails to realize it's unnatural in itself to lust after children or minors. An evil heart fails to realize that it's unnatural to look at a child that way. It's unnatural to look at Tamar that way. It's your sister. But evil heartedness, can't even realize it. The lust, the desire, the evilness, the evil is so deep embedded in them, they fail to realize it's unnatural in itself to walk down the hallway as a father, as a grandfather, and impose itself onto the daughter. And it's time for you to stand up to it. It's time for you to to protect your nieces, your nephews. It's time for you to stand up and say, "No, no more covering up nothing. It's time for you to do that. But what's going to happen? I, listen, what's going to happen to the next three kids? What's going to happen to the next three grandkids? 
It's time for us to stand up for that. And it's time for you to realize if it happened to you, it wasn't your fault. Next thought. The spirit of contradiction was in man's corrupt nature. This is, this is Amnon. The spirit of contradiction was in man's corrupt nature that it, shall, that, that it still desired forbidden fruit. We know what happened in the garden. It was still in man's nature. God says, you can have all of this. Don't touch this one. Hey, man, you got a wife in there. And, and, and that's their mother. She's all yours. That's what you exercise your sexual pleasures on. She's all yours. Or he's all yours. Your husband's all yours. But you can't march down that hallway and grasp on forbidden fruit. But an evil, wicked-hearted person says, I see all the trees you told me to touch, but I won't take more. <clears throat> so the spirit of contradiction was in man's corrupt nature that it still desired forbidden fruit. And the more strongly it is forbidden, the more greedily it desires it. What does he tell him? Stop. He got more forceful. <laughs> and that's how that happens. What does he tell him? No, stop. This is not right. And she even pleaded to him, you're my brother. Spirit of contradiction was in him, in his corrupt nature, still desiring forbidden fruit. The more strongly it is forbidden, hey, don't touch it, the more greedily it desires it. Next on. Amnon betrayed his sister's virtue and honor, of which as a brother, he should have been protecting it. Did you catch that? Your brothers, your sisters should be protecting you, not imposing themselves on you. So when you're like, why are you trying to see me showering in here? Why are you opening that door? Why are you doing that? And a lot of times, I'm, I'm, I'm just, man, I'm, I'm just, look. When you have a blended family, you've got to have these talks. Because your daughter may be 13 and developing. Her son may be 19. Not saying that he's going to do anything, but you got to have these talks to let everybody know these are the boundaries in this house. Why? This is a new way of us living as a family. But how I lived over here with my daughter was the doctor and her mother seen her private parts. That's how I live. And how you lived over here with your son I don't know, but I'm letting everybody know right now. He's not to be in that room. He's not to be in that bathroom. And that is just the bottom line. You're trying to say my, I'm not, I'm not trying to say nothing. I'm just saying in this environment, we need to understand some rules here. Do you understand what I'm saying? And you have to have those talks. Why? Because this was his step. Think about this now. Next talk. An unsanctified, unguarded heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. The Bible says, you don't even know what's in here is so wicked. An unsanctified heart to God, unguarded heart to God, left to itself, opens the door to wickedness so vile until it gets itself, it gives itself an admittance to violate. We've seen some very powerful figures go down in the last five years that felt like their power and their position and their wealth allowed them to violate. But see, when you don't guard your heart, see, that's why anybody who points out everybody else's faults and judges everybody and not looking at the plank in their eye, those hearts are unguarded. They don't realize the evil that you're trying to police resides right in your heart. Next talk. Here's our final thought. Fleshly lust are their own punishment. They not only war against the soul, but against the body too. That's why pornog pornography is so destructive. The Bible describes it as a canker worm. And a canker worm is like a Trojan virus in a computer. And that Trojan virus hits every point of that computer 
to destroy how it's supposed to function, to, to literally confuse the computer. And now it can't open this, and now it can't open that, and now it can't run the system because this Trojan virus has went all through it. Men, women, you got to get your lust in check because lust will take you as far as you let it. It's like a wood burning fire. That fire says, put as much wood on me as possible, I'm still going to burn it. Lust left unchecked can turn into evilness. You're judging me with the point. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying it, 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 you got to realize I don't have a daughter. You're looking at your daughter. You're looking at your mother. You're looking at somebody else's mother. You're looking at somebody else's daughter. Maybe your daughter in the future. You got you, you to realize that, oh, oh, okay, man alive. Yeah, you got to realize this is, this is lust and this thing can turn out of control. And it's like a canker worm, the Bible says, and it wants to touch every part of your Christian life and begin to confuse it. Well, man, he said God loved me, but last night I was, man, I got to get up and teach the class, but last night I was, I'm here to tell you, don't just let it go unchecked. Why? Fleshly lusts are their own punishment. They not, they not only war against the soul, but against the body too. And young man, in this room, if you're struggling with something like that, we can start a support group. But you got to get it under control. Why? Because young men right now at 35, they're sterile. Why are they sterile? Masturbation. Since they was 15. And that's just not, that's just not, it's not fair for us to stand back and go, oh, well, you know, you got you to fulfill your lustful desires. Listen, <laughs> that thing is designed to, just like the Trojan virus, hit every point of your life. You don't, kind of don't trust women. You kind of want women. You kind of, and it's like, you're getting confused. Leave it alone. I can't seem to stop. Put your wife on the software, and when you go to the site you're not supposed to be going to, it pings her phone. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Or put your husband on the software, and when you go to a site you ain't supposed to go to, it pings his phone. That's all you got to do. It's just that simple. Because magically, all of a sudden, now you realize, oh, this is a serious thing. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Were you blessed by the word of God? Yeah.